Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 96. I'm a day late. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops. i uh, got some um, things to talk about. I want to talk about RVing um, winter season here and there. And my worst nightmare is about to happen this weekend. Let's talk about it. Well, I just got back from Central Oregon. Um, actually, didn't do any video recording. I uh, decided to just take a break. <laughs> and, uh, um, it was like a two-day drive up there. And then I got up there early because our RVs up at Central Oregon, and uh, it's much colder up there, by the way. <laughs> Remember, I'm in Arizona. Anyway, so the next day, uh, Sherry and my daughter flew in, and one of the reasons we went up there is it's uh, you know we want to get up there before winter, <clears throat> and it's already getting kind of chilly. And uh, check on her folks. Uh, Mom and Dad live up there. They're in their 80s now, and. Uh, so we kind of want to just check in. We kind of keep the RV up there because in case we need to get up there real quick, um, uh, Sherry's father's dealing with some, um, medical issues. And so, uh, we're uh, available to help them out anytime. So we're set up really well there. When we're there, we're kind of boondocking. So, uh, the RV's winterized. So I got up there a day early before the girls got there and kind of de-winterized it. And uh, it did pretty good. Um, my RV's equipped with uh, solar, and uh, it's only an 85 watt panel on there. And uh, I have a controller that pretty much kind of just keeps the batteries up, and it's not designed for hardcore boondocking. And it's got a generator, so when the battery gets a little low, I just fire that puppy up and let her run and it takes about a half hour. I'm in good shape. And I do have an inverter system put in uh, the RV too that um, can be turned on and off from a, the control panel. And it's designed to power my entertainment system, the, t you know, the big television in our D uh, DVD player in case we want to watch a movie or watch TV um, on the big TV. And we have a little TV up front that's already a 12 uh, volt television. And But the thing is, is, as you guys know, inverters, boy, they uh, when you turn those on, even if you're not using them, they use up a lot of power. And so they'll drain the batteries pretty quick. I usually can go through, you know, I can watch television for about... <clears throat> I don't know, two or three hours, and then the batteries start dropping down to uh, uh, a level I don't like them at. And so uh, typically I'll turn on the generator right after that to kind of replenish the batteries. And during the day, it gets kind of a trickle charge with that 85-watt panel. But anyway, my main subject today I wanted to talk about is <laughs> RVing uh, here and there. So automatically, you know, well, of course, all summer people tell me, <laughs> as we're in Arizona, uh, I couldn't do that. It's too hot, 110 degree weather. Oh, my God. And so uh, that's about equivalent to now that I've been up to Central Oregon. Uh, I had to even figure out where I kept my jacket because I don't wear jackets that often. Well, down here, you just don't wear them. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> and I noticed I had to dress a little warmer. And so now I say to you as your winter's coming is, oh, man, I can't stand to be in that cold weather. <laughs> so, but in Arizona, we're now like eight months of summer. Yes, it's starting to happen. It's still a little bit warm here. It's been in the 90s. Uh, but 90s are really comfortable here. And uh, it's just you kind of get used to it. Uh, the bad part is, you know, it was, we have a pool and it's just heated by the sunlight and it's cooling down. So it's one of those get in the pool and go, oh, gosh, it's pretty chilly. Um, <clears throat> chilly to us is 75 degrees. 
ideal conditions is about 85 on up. And I've seen the pool get up to almost 90 degrees, but yeah. But not anymore, it's cooling down. So uh, yeah, I uh, I just noticed a couple of things when I was up north is uh, I could definitely feel more moisture in the air. You can deal, um, the RV was in great shape, uh, but I could tell there was moisture uh, that we just don't deal with down here. But I am much happier to have my RV stored up there, even though it's gonna go into, uh, uh, <laughs> it's in concoot. <laughs> cocoon mode right now it's just kind of all wrapped up i actually taped up all the uh, vents uh, to keep critters out and i uh, went through all the procedures of um, uh, winterizing it putting all through the system uh, drain the um, uh, hot water heater drain the tanks and uh, uh, i even put because there's always moisture in the tanks um <clears throat> winterization um, antifreeze even in those tanks just pour them right in and I make sure all the pea traps have uh, uh, antifreeze in them too so anyway we'll see how well a job I did by next spring when we go back up there uh, unless for some reason we go up there sooner but never know but yeah I just um, I, I got <clears throat> sometimes it's really easy to kind of like say oh my gosh it's so hot up here all the time but uh, it's so easy to forget. It's kind of like high school. All you remember is the good part. But I got up there and I was like, um, I slept good because it was nice and cold. But, um, and, you know, so, I don't know. Uh, I guess I got an appreciation for Arizona during that trip. And I kind of appreciate that. So, anyway, happy to be in Arizona. Our weather is great. We go for walks every night. Blue skies. Open skies. Beautiful, 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 you know. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. Well, it's time for me to share my greatest fear. <laughs> it's coming up. I knew it was gonna happen. It's gonna happen, and it's gonna happen this weekend. And what is this thing that's terrorizing me and scaring me and giving me nightmares? We are going to babysit our grandson. <laughs> our five-year-old grandson yeah so anyway the thing is is i don't know if you know this but this generation is kind of an electronic kind of thing and granted i'm pretty techy i mean between podcasts and videos and uh, a studio and all that stuff i mean we we high we're very high tech but no video games here <laughs> Uh, we do have a 360, but we haven't hooked it up since we moved down here, and we're not going to. And so uh, this little guy uh, is definitely from the electronic world, and his older brothers, stepbrothers, are, um, or half-brothers, I should say, <clears throat> are, uh, you know, it's all about video games and stuff. And uh, so uh, it's, this little guy uh, not only is five years old, he is high energy and um, uh, can be a little sensitive too. So it's going to be interesting because, you know, two old schoolers and you guys know how Sherry and I are. <laughs> <laughs> and we got this little five-year-old and he's going to spend the night. And I don't think he's, I don't think he's ever spent the night at anybody's house. And so uh, it could be a very long Saturday night. Um, we got it you now. We do have a spare bedroom with a great big king size bed, and he uh, loves Cinder in a way, but uh, you know, Cinder's is as big as him, and he doesn't have a dog, and so it's a love hate relationship. And uh, Cinder likes to uh, sleep on the bed, and so it'll be kind of curious if uh, Cinder will snuggle up with um, my little grandson or. Uh, or will that terrorize him? Uh, who knows? I just don't know. And of course, <clears throat> uh, in Arizona, the other and, well, first of all, uh, we have a swimming pool, so it's the smart thing to do is have you know uh, people that have families will fence off their their pool, and and ours isn't, so we have to be very cautious to keep an eye on Kai. But luckily, Kai can f swim like a fish. But doesn't mean that we uh, uh, ever turn our back on him. 
So uh, when we're uh, and in Arizona, kids don't play in their yards kind of like you do up in the Northwest uh, because it's so warm. Um, but we do like to go outside a lot, so I think we're going to do you know a few walks and and uh, things like that. But it will be quite interesting. I think he does have like a little electronic thing that's kind of a place hand carry PlayStation thing and I don't know the names of all the games and stuff but uh he I think he'll have that but um and of course he's a finicky eater and uh for those of you uh watch listen to shows prior to this we're vegans and so and uh so it'll be interesting to see how well he likes eating some of the foods we eat we uh we do have some treats but, uh, um, and I'm kind of, man, I'm a little rusty to hang around with Rugrats. So, uh, it will just be interesting to see how this goes. And I'll definitely give you a full report on the next radio show. <laughs> but, uh, I am a little worried, but at the same time, I'm not. And, and I do want to kind of show him things that are unique to Grandma and Grandpa. And, uh, um, you know, the fact that, we enjoy life as life without uh, that many electronic toys. And uh, I hope that bleeds off to him a little bit as, as something special that he does with his grandma and grandpa that uh, although it's not a lot of electronics, we do a lot of things. And, of course, you guys know we have the radio show, well, uh, video show, The Turds, which is our puppet shows and stuff. So we have this big green screen thing with all these puppets and i bet you anything he's like he's gonna want to play with those and that's okay um that's um you know and we'll fiddle around maybe i'll let him do some green screen stuff and and uh kids love that stuff but anyway he gets to see all the turd puppets and play with them and uh, and uh you know pretend to make a video or something but <laughs> we do have that and uh we um we have another hobby here. Sherry and I like to do resin art. And so I have one room where I actually make jewelry. And I have another room, our main room, we actually make pours. And uh, if you ever get a chance to see those, uh, just go to our channel called Northwest Custom Images. And that's where we do our art stuff. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, it's coming. The day of reckoning. Grandma and Grandpa have to babysit the five-year-old. So stay tuned. Well, I think it's also time to update you with a couple of things that we have are uh, either refurbished or redone or recreated as far as the radio world. And so um, I thought I'd share those with you on this little module here. So um, RV Talk Radio has been around for a long time and it's doing great. And I want to thank all of our listeners for that. Uh, we do have some other shows that are podcasts. Uh, one is Arizona Talk Radio. Um, the web address for that is aztalkradio.com. And that one uh, we're still kind of working on and uh, not all that consistent on the episodes yet. Uh, trying to kind of get the mojo going. And we also just created another podcast called goodoldradio.com. And it's designed to do um, vintage radio shows. And uh, I just, I personally love radio shows, the old ones. Uh, the current one that we're uh, uh, starting to load is a whole series of Gunsmoke, which was a sample of what you heard on our last episode. Uh, so we're trying to do like two episodes a week on that, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it won't be just Gunsmoke. We're going to add all kinds of other shows. It'll go on and on and on. So if you listen to podcasts in your cell phone, we now have that show registered on iTunes and in uh, uh, TuneIn. So if you just go into your search, type in goodoldradio.com, go ahead and subscribe to that. And if you just like a good half hour old-fashioned vintage radio show to listen to they're awesome so uh, uh i just i don't know this is something i like to do and it's kind of 
I, you have to use your imagination when you're listening to these things and uh, uh, they're just great shows you know it's like I truly believe we need more uh, Highway to Heavens <laughs> right now too <laughs> anyway but you know I'm just old school but uh, the other thing we're excited about is we refurbished and redid Good Music Radio now we had to change uh, we changed our uh, player to uh, a different player and uh, uh, it all had to do with music licensing and so uh, we were with one company that was having issues with their licensing um, and it's quite complicated but uh, uh, we finally found a different company to go with that gives us an overall music license for uh, playing uh, uh, classic rock basically and what I really like about Good Music Radio is, one, is we have very little commercials in it, but we do have some commercials, uh, very little talk, and it's just good music, uh, past, present, and future. So, I mean, it's not unusual to uh, find some good tunes that are from either Dean Martin or uh, something like that way back. Uh, to, you know, really good stuff from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And um, and then current stuff, uh, Megan Trainer, uh, you'll find uh, uh, Taylor Swift, all those kind of, um, uh, Beyonce, we got all, uh, all, those ra uh, all those tunes, but they're just the good tunes. And so you'll be amazed how the mix works so well. It can go from... Uh, a really hot song of, uh, of today and, and actually um, blend with something that's older and uh, has easy listening mixed in there too and it's just good tunes and then for those of you of my age there would be tunes that pop up on there going dang I haven't heard that forever and that's what good music radio is all about it's a 24 7 radio show you can listen to it while you're traveling if you got internet, uh, you can you, know, you can easily play it on uh, your cell phone. You just uh, uh, go to uh, uh, Live 365, which is just uh, you go to Google Play, type in Live 365, you download their their player, uh, their software, then you go into the search, find uh, uh, well, actually, a couple, uh, well, yeah, just put in Good Music Radio and uh, put it in your favorites and you can listen to our uh, radio station anytime you want and then you can also listen to it on your PC you can play it on your smart TV uh, it's just really good music and it's not irritating with a bunch of commercials and so you get a chance to check it out so all kinds of good stuff new podcasts old podcasts uh, uh, all that stuff's uh, back up and running real well. We're really happy with it. Good music radio. We're tickled pink to be able to uh, just play good music without a whole bunch of horns and, and, and just good tunes. So anyway, I hope you appreciate it. I hope you get a chance to check them out. In the description, I'll put a link to all those shows and see what you think. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Well, one of the things I noticed uh, when I was driving up to Central Oregon a week and a half ago, uh, it was amazing to see how many RVs were heading south. <laughs> and uh, just one after the other, the next one, the next one. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people have figured out down here, of course, in Arizona, we have eight months of some great weather. And uh, usually around oh, April or so, people start heading on back. And... Uh, but yeah, actually you'd be amazed what impact that has to our traffic and stuff like that. So all the local people, the biggest message they say is, all right, all you uh, uh, sunbirds <laughs> or snowbirds, I guess it would be, uh, please stay off the roads till we get to work. <laughs> and and uh, that comes from my daughter who says, boy, I sure can tell when the snowbirds are down here uh, because it takes her a little longer to get to work. So my big question is to you snowbirds is, what are you doing up so early? <laughs> anyway, stay at the RV till people get to work. <laughs> they say we drive too slow. So I don't know. And of course, Sherry's in that commute too. So I, I don't hear her saying much about it, but my daughter notices it. So I, it's kind of funny. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, our mega 
RV parks here, I imagine, are starting to fill up. And uh, a lot of folks will come down here and realize how uh, nice and pretty it is. And, uh, yeah, they all freak out when it starts getting too hot. But uh, um, it's not bad if you have a home, but it's really hard in an RV to keep your RV cool. I remember last year I was telling you we actually had three air conditioners in the RV. We had two that were built in and a portable that we uh, actually put in separately. And we kind of did that to protect the animals too. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, it does get warm. But uh, if you have a home down here, uh, it's, you can be quite comfortable. And and uh, you just kind of live a little differently when it's really hot. We just uh, do a lot of indoor things. We, you know, That's when we go to a lot of shows or festivals that are indoors or watch movies. And, um, and if you have a pool, uh, enjoy our pool. But yeah, uh, the, the snowbirds are coming and we can see it. And boy, did I see a lot of them. I, you know, every shape and size, whether it's just a trailer, fifth wheel, uh, mega uh, motorhome machines. Uh, gosh, some people look like, I don't, I mean, I even see where you have a trailer behind your fifth wheel. It's like, really? Oh my gosh. And I don't know how they get away with that. But I know some states you can do that, but I don't, I don't know how they get away with it when they come down here. So anyway, <clears throat> um, I swear, I don't know why some people just don't buy houses here because it looks like they're bringing their entire household uh, down to Arizona with them. Uh, I've never seen some of these rigs are so packed up with stuff. Amazing. But anyway, winter's here, Arizona. Come on down, folks. Now, you guys heard me talking about the uh, snowbirds coming down here. But uh, last year I did um, quite an extensive talk about what I'm going to talk about here in a second, and it's your pet. Now, depending where you are in Arizona, like if you're more in northern Arizona, you want to listen to this carefully. Now, when Sherry and I were, had our RV here, we were over by um, uh, Fort McDowell. And uh, which is Fountain Hills and stuff. And uh, it's right in the edge of the desert. And I don't care what you think. <laughs> and it is cooler weather. But we do have lots of rattlesnakes. I've seen more rattlesnakes in my entire lifetime being up down here for a year and a half. And uh, uh, only because I'm kind of out in the wilderness a little more. So... Uh, most of the time I see them when I'm just driving and uh, never had a close encounter, which is really good. But it's your dog I'm worried about. And I don't know why nobody gets the message. I keep talking about it. But did you know, and when you get down here, you should go to your to a local Arizona vet and they have a rattlesnake vaccine. Now, no, it's not a cure-all. It doesn't, you know, they get bit and nothing happens. They still got to go to the uh, uh, emergency animal clinic. So when you get down here, the first thing you want to know is where is the 24-7 animal clinic or hospitals? Because if your dog gets bit, uh, if they don't have this vaccine, if bitten in the right spot, they have about 20 minutes to live. And that's pretty sad. And even uh, if you knew where the animal clinic was and everything, you probably might have a hard time making it in 20 minutes. So, what does this vaccine do? Well, the vaccine uh, is a uh, vaccine that gives you more time, basically. And uh, what it does is it just kind of uh, holds the uh, poison at bay. And you're, you still got to get to an animal emergency clinic as fast as you can uh, for uh, possibly uh, getting a vaccine. And depending on the situation, they actually mean uh, the vaccines can be very expensive, uh, five to ten thousand dollars. As I've heard things like that. So, ugh. so anyway, uh, um, but I mean, we all love our animals to death. So. Um, basically the vaccine buys time so they have different sizes of the vaccine for you know uh, different sizes of the dogs and they'll tell you how often but it's a like a main shot and then like a booster three 30 days later 
And uh, Cinder, our our dog has it. Uh, she's due for a boost uh, for renewal. But uh, those darn dogs, you know, you could be walking on a trail with a dog sniffing off to the side, all that stuff, and you may not even realize how many times you probably might have walked right by a rattlesnake. But you know, our little nosy dogs, they kind of put their no, uh, noses under the bushes and things like that, and they could encounter one. And that would not make your day, and it certainly wouldn't make your day if you lost your pet. So please, when you get down here to Arizona, do realize that there is a rattlesnake vaccine. It's very affordable. It's only like $35. And get your dog the shot, to, just to give you a little peace of mind that your uh, little critter is going to be with you for a long time. <clears throat> so I don't know how many times I keep running and people going, I've never heard of that before. And yes, it's true. I didn't make this up. My dog's actually got it. Uh, it's affordable and it really will give you a peace of mind. So please folks, when you get down here with your pets and especially if you like to go for walks and hikes and you like to take your pet with you, please get the rattlesnake vaccine for your dog. I've been watching a kind of a new channel um, and it's called Adventure Van Man. Uh, don't know him very well, but I've, uh, I, I've been watching a couple of his videos because he did a show about doing the sugar beet harvest. And uh, he actually did a really good presentation of, of kind of the process of getting up there. It usually lasts about 14 days. And uh, apparently he's like a driver and stuff like that. So I, it looks like he got one or two extra days up there to kind of help uh, finish things up. And then I watched this another video of him um, after the 14 days that it, it was over. And this is up in Idaho, I believe. And uh, once again, he did a really good job of uh, kind of doing a presentation about how to do the sugar beet harvest. And it's called Adventure Van Man. And uh, I'm not familiar with him. It looks like he has a pretty good following. And uh, I just want to tip my hat to uh, um, a great uh, presentation about what it takes to do that sugar beet harvest. Uh, wouldn't be something for me. It's, um, I'm, I think I'm, I don't know, I'm too old for that stuff, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I should do it. <laughs> uh, I am losing weight, guys. I, I've actually lost 20 pounds since we've gone vegan. So we're doing, I'm doing all right. Um, and feeling a lot better and, and much more energy and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, you get a chance, um, uh, uh, check out the channel Adventure Van Man. Um, and don't know the guy's name, and, and I'm sure some of you guys probably listen to him or watch his shows and uh, know him very well. But um, it's, it's just like uh, me just running into Bob the other day. Uh, I didn't mean personally, but saw his uh, channel. Uh, uh, cheap RV living and uh, they've done pretty good jobs and his latest video was about how to give your dog a bath out in a Thule's or you know when you are limited on water so he also do, uh, is doing that same video he was doing a presentation of different water systems and pumps that you could use and and uh, uh, how people uh, bathe their pets with it and of course you can use the water pumps for other reasons so yeah I don't know. Um, still would be tough to want to live in a van but um, once again I, I love seeing simple people living within their means and enjoying life and, and a lot of people they also enjoy uh, the privacy and, and uh, uh, I don't know if I like that much privacy um, but if you like quiet time your book kind of reader like uh, to kind of be in touch with their environment a little bit. Uh, I could see why uh, 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 van living could uh, be you know okay, but it's not for everybody. I can tell you that for sure. The other question I have for you, and uh, and see if you answer: When's the last time you went bowling? <laughs> And I got to tell you, I haven't gone bowling forever, but last weekend, of course, the daughter calls and says, hey, all the kids are all going bowling. And I'm kind of like thinking, ugh. And bowling is one of those things is you, you think about it and you go, ugh, I don't want it. You know, no. But when you get there, you have a blast. And what I got to tell you is um, 
we went to one of these kind of real modern ones here in Arizona, uh, down in Gilbert, and it was uh, awesome. <laughs> it was so cool. The thing was gigantic. Everything's electronic. And the cool thing was, is you know, uh, uh, and by the way, it's not cheap anymore. But uh, the cool thing was when we had the little five-year-old one I'm going to babysit. Yeah. Anyway, um, when they put the names in, they put him as, you know, toddler, kind of young guy. And so when his turn came up electronically, the little sidebars came up automatically just for him. I thought, that is the coolest thing. Um, so uh, uh, for him, it's more like playing pool. <laughs> anyway, but he had... For, I, I gotta tell you, uh, that kid had so much fun. And of course, grandma and grandpa teasing the heck out of him, you know. And, uh, we'd tell him we'd have to go up there and wiggle his butt, and he'd go up there and wiggle and make all these little noises. And he had a blast. I, once again, I don't know, that kid's got some energy. So it, it'll be interesting to see how grandma and grandpa handled this five year old this weekend. But anyway, if you haven't gone bowling in a while, uh, go check out one of those new up-to-date bowling alleys um, and, and go give it a shot. It was a lot of fun. Lots uh, great. If you have kids or grandkids with you, they also have, a lot of them have the gaming area for them to go play. Um, also, uh, you know, there's a bar, the food. This place was great, man. They were checking to see if you're happy and wanted to bring you anything. Of course, you know, you got to give them tips and stuff, but uh, what a great day we had with the kids bowling. So if you haven't gone bowling in a while and go f and you're in a, near a big city, go find a new bowling alley and, and you just find it fun. Uh, there, this place we went to was really clean, had great bowling balls. It was uh, uh, really, you know, uh, music videos in the background. It was just a happy time. So yeah, when you get a chance, go try it out again. If you haven't done it in a while, go bowling. I have a question for you. So when you're traveling in your RV, and I had this happen when I went up to Central Oregon, is I have a Magellan um, GPS. Um, it's the Good Sam version that I bought from um, Camping World. And have you ever been like using that and you program where you're going and you're going down the highway and it's happy the way you're going and all that and suddenly uh, you decide you want to go this way instead of that way and so your GPS has a fit and it constantly says turn left turn around go back turn left or do you turn blah 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 and this goes on for miles trying to get you to go back to that one road. And, uh, you know, you're driving and you don't really think of it and you're kind of irritated. The stupid thing won't figure out where you're going and recalculate. So I finally, I don't know, um, maybe a lot of you people already do that, but I'm going, you know, this thing is just not recalculating. It's just nagging me, basically. <laughs> I still think they should make a GPS with an attitude. Hey, you stupid, turn around. Anyway, uh, so I found that if I turn off my Magellan, and then turn it back on and it uh, reconnects and recalculates. It actually recalculates from the new position and usually lines up to where I want to go and, and gives up on its old old ideas. So if you haven't tried that, I'm just kind of bringing that up as something I just discovered. And some of you people probably already mastered it. But if you're using your GPS and, and you go a direction that you know is faster or easier to drive and it's having a fit. Um, for example, like when uh, I drive up through Vegas, I'll go through Vegas. but um, and, and then when I get up to the Reno area, actually Fallon area, instead of going towards Reno, I actually go towards Winnemucca. And when you go into Bend, Oregon, it's trying to take me to Reno and then up through Susanville and through California. But it's so much easier to drive th uh, Highway 95, I believe it is, to Winnemucca and come up Central Oregon the back way and come up to Burns, Oregon. <clears throat> Very nice drive, by the way. Anyway, much easier to do when you're hauling a trailer. And uh, anyway... Um, uh, but when I do that, my Magellan has a fit. So I just found 
I shut it off, wait a minute, turn it back on, all is happy again and, and that little thing's not nagging me anymore. So I hope that's a good tip for you. Maybe you already knew it. Maybe you some, know some other tips about GPSs that uh, will uh, uh, save you some anguish. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I just... I still think GPSs have need to have a uh, like a redneck attitude or some kind of like uh, naggy kind of uh, sound or or something just to keep us entertained during a long drive. That would be kind of nice. I uh, that probably get kind of irritating too. But anyway, let's move on. Well, this kind of wraps up this episode, episode ninety six and ninety seven is coming up. Next week, hopefully I'm on time. I'm sorry I'm late by a day. Uh, just been busy. The radio stations, I had loading music, uh, just got all kinds of stuff going on. Had to do some plumbing. Had to go bowling. Now I got to babysit my kid this weekend. And I, I can't even sleep thinking about it. <laughs> it's not that bad. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, we appreciate every one of you. We've been growing every week, and we appreciate that. Don't forget to check out some of our other shows. I put the links in the description below, uh, especially when you're traveling. If you like some good music, uh, there you go on some other podcasts. So anyway, and don't forget the uh, goodoldradio.com. That's got some great podcasts, uh, old-time shows to listen to, great for traveling. So anyway, everybody, be safe. Buy yourself an RV. Get out there. Come on down to Arizona because it's getting real pretty down here. So anyway, talk to you later. Bye now.